welcome to the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. This national park is one you've probably not heard of. It's up in North Dakota, which doesn't get a lot of traffic anyways. So you may not be aware of this one, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to explore it anyways. It's made up of three parts. The southern unit, the Alcorn Ranch unit, Canyon Overlook. This is going to give you a grand view of the rolling hills in the southern unit section. I keep having to catch myself from saying Painted Desert. I'm used to it. But this is the Painted Canyon. Those hills. They look so much better being lit up. I'll tell you that right now. There's some clouds in the sky, so it gets speckled down there. The sun is coming and going. Hang around and wait for the sun to show up, because it'll give you a much better look. If you look here close, you'll see a buffalo or a bison there in the background, below that hill. Some awesome views. I love the way those hills are laying out. It's a little windy today. This is looking towards the west. Now let's walk over to the other side and give you... This is pretty much straight to the north. The look that you're going to get. I love the greens and those browns. Yes, look so awesome. Enjoy this peak and we will get on to the rest of the southern unit. Welcome to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. This is the entrance to the southern unit. If you blink you're gonna miss it. It is here in the town of Medora and you see that little arrow to the right, you'll be driving down Pacific Avenue, I believe it is, and then you'll have to turn right there and then head down there, and that's what we'll be doing. Let's get going. The drive-in is a pretty cool little drive here. It's a fun, curvy road with all these green rolling hills and the brown bluffs. This is really cool. Sun's starting to poke into some of these shots. It's getting a little late in the afternoon. And hopefully this gives you a feel for how this looks. I think it looks awesome. Now the ranger at the entrance station said it will take about two hours to complete this loop. Uh, I guess that would depend on how many times you stop. The way I stop it could take four hours, but they say two hours. So we will see how that goes. First little stopping area is Prairie Dog Town. First you don't see anything and you wonder why there's a pull out here, but if you stop, if you stop 
and look around and listen, you will see the prairie dogs. They are out and they're making noises. There's one crawling through the grass. See all their houses here. I wonder if there's any spaces up for rent. Prairie Dog Town encompasses quite an area. Very large and there is lots of prairie dogs. Here's another little overlook. You'll notice you get some nice view of the hills on the south side of the 94. Makes for some interesting views. Don't know photographically how much I like it, but this is the view right after the prairie dog town. The next official overlook is the Skyline Vista overlook. It's a huge parking area. It has a couple paths that lead down to overlooking the valley where the I-94 runs through. Before I got here, I thought by the sound of it that Skyline Overlook would be a really great place to take photos. I'm not so sure anymore. Because you got the I-94 down below there. You've got some hills over there you can see. But I'm hoping that once we get further into the loop that goes around the southern unit that we'll be able to find some similar looks without all the traffic. And if you look back there, you can see a ranch or some houses back in there. We're going to want to avoid This pullout here doesn't have a name. It's got a little information sign about the Little Missouri. That's flowing down there. And also the Cottonwood Campground is down there. So this is a convenient way to stop and kind of show you the view that if you're in Cottonwood, Can or Cottonwood Campground, what you would see uh, without me having to actually go in there. What's interesting is I see some wild horses down there. I had read that there were wild horses here. Look at that, a herd of wild horses. Who would have thought? I had read about it, but I wasn't sure if I'd actually get to see any. So they're just outside the campground area. I'm not sure that they're doing any things that it would be entitled wild at this point. The thoughts you have, you know, maybe you have, or I definitely have, where I envision these wild horses fighting and pawing each other and jumping up in the air. I don't see any of that, but it's still really cool to see. We are here where the loop road starts. The sign there says road closed. I'd heard that they were doing some road work, some repaving and stuff. But when I entered, she didn't say anything. The ranger didn't say anything about not being able to go that way. She said that you can turn around at any point and come back. It's a two-way road. But right now, it looks like a one-direction road. Well, I'll have to find out. I was going to go counterclockwise, but it looks like I will be forced to go clockwise now in this loop road. And we come first to the Peaceful Valley Ranch. This, I could imagine it would be a very peaceful area, so I can see why they'd name that. I am not going to go in there right now. We'll see it from a distance. 
but it looks like an old ranch house in there. Uh, you know what? We should go there. I never mind. Let's go. We should go check it out. A peaceful valley ranch. This is a really cool looking old ranch. I have parked and I am on foot. You can see the construction here. Rock fireplace. Look at the wood. Is a bunkhouse at one time. Genuine wood. Looks like they've recocked it with some cement or some mortar in between the logs, but that's how it would have been constructed a hundred years ago. And then a more modern house next to it. Here's a bigger parking area. This also leads off to a hike. There's lots of hiking trails here in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Well, this gives you a glimpse of what's here. I think I need to get on the road so I can complete the loop before the sun sets. Look at I found a bison. Just a lonely guy out by himself, but he's having fun. I'm going to leave him alone. I'm photographing this from a distance with a zoom lens. There are bison in this park, that's for sure. This is a sign of one right there. We now come to another little prairie dog exhibit. Show you how they build. And another area of prairie dogs out here. They like this area. Can't really spot. Well, there, wait, there I spot one. There's one guy right over there. It's a little guy. Aww. They're so cute. Today's pretty quiet, maybe because it's later and there's not too many cars on the road right now. Here, one going by right now. The opposite side, there's a little hill. Here's a bit more of the road for you. This is aiming about northeast if you're concerned about directions at all, especially if you're doing night photography. It's kind of nice to know which areas are facing north, east, and south, the main directions we're concerned with. I'm definitely scouting because I want to photograph the Milky Way tonight. So I am checking out my east and southeast and south directions. Although I like shooting to the north also, you can get the stars rotating around Polaris or if you want to do a star trail, it's a great, great way to do that is to point your camera north. I like the curves right here, there's no place to stop, but it's very curvy and very cool. And very looking into the sun here probably blind all of us right now. I don't have any sunglasses to put on the camera, so it's on its own. I pull over at the top of this hill. There's 
no overlook marking or name that I could see. But I thought the view looked really great. And since I'm concerned about trying to find a Milky Way composition for me, I thought I would stop and take a look at what this offers. This little mound here is going to be pointing north. So that's approximately north. This continues on a little bit. You can see a little trail over there. Let me see, this is about east. You can see some of the road work gear there. That's actually about south, somewhere in there. So, I don't think I like this. It's kind of cool looking, but in fact, it's really cool looking. The view, it's kind of neat that you can walk out here a little bit on this, uh, these couple little tops of these ridges, these hills. But there's some really cool geology going on here. Let me look back down here again. I thought first maybe it was just the way they'd blown the rocks apart or something with drills but look at look at i've got some friends who are geologists they'll know what this means i don't know what it means other than it just looks cool and let's look across the road here we will walk past the construction gear for the road. And this hillside caught my eye. I didn't catch it at first because I was looking to the right. Glad I stopped. Look at this. This is, there's some hoodoos up here at the top. And a car driving by with the road work and laying down some fresh gravel. The cars are a little extra noisy here. I'm going to go grab my camera and take some photos right here. These are really cool looking. After that hill, we come to Wind Canyon Trail. This is a short little trail. It says 0.4 miles, 15 minutes to loop around. Moderate gives us some really cool views, I believe, of the Little Missouri River. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk along it and check this out for you guys it looks like it's got some really cool erosion carvings from the water in this area i wonder if this is the tie off your horses if you got horses here looks like the trail goes this must be to the left where it comes up at there's some really cool erosion over there. Doesn't that look awesome? Well, we'll check that on the way back. I think we'll go to the right. We will walk along this. Ooh. Very 
very interesting. This would be beautiful at sunset, I bet. Sun's getting low, so it's in the camera a little bit, as you can tell. But that would be a wonderful view right there. Some other hikers on the trail. So beautiful. I may have found the spot I want for the Milky Way. This could be really cool. Right in this area, you got cliffs, bare cliffs right there. A little Missouri River. Maybe you can reflect some stars. This just might work. Let me see. That's aiming south. So yeah, this could be the trick right here for the Milky Way for me. I'm gonna keep hiking and we'll see. Maybe I'll we'll find something else. But right now, I really like that. This could be a great shot right here at sunset. Once the sun gets a little bit lower and it's not right in the photo, gets below the horizon, lights up those clouds, got the nice curve like that. Maybe compose it something like this. Might not be quite this wide. This looks like a great place for a sunset. Continue on the hike. Let's see how far this goes. I thought it went the other direction. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it fooled me. It's my first time here. It's allowed to fool me, or I'm allowed to get fooled, I guess. Because they said it was a loop. It looked like a loop on the map. But now I'm not sure where it's looping at. I thought maybe it was going to loop down to the river. But I don't think so now. I don't know. Here's a left and a right right here. Maybe the loop is just around that little hill right there. Who knows? We'll find out. Some really interesting rocks here. Very interesting rocks. And we get to the west end of the loop, it looks like. Ooh, this would be another really cool spot for sunset. I like the way those rocks right there are undercut. That could be really nice. is looking to the south right there for the Milky Way. It's maybe not quite as photogenic because we're a little further away from the cliffs and stuff. But that's the view you have. There's the road, the loop road down there. I'm not sure where it's ending. There's people going through there. It said it was ending up ahead, but 
I don't know where yet. Okay, now I found the other part of the loop. So it does loop much further. The trail we walked in on next to the river is to the right. This is going down the far side of the hill. And it'll end us up right to the one side of the parking lot. I don't think too many people loop. This side of the trail is getting a little narrow with vegetation. Probably everybody just goes back the way they came. This is nice. It's actually kind of cool in the shade right now, right here. So Wind Canyon, definitely stop here. It says 0.4 miles. I mean, it doesn't even seem like any of that. So definitely stop by here and check this out. And this is that cool eroded area. Lots of great flowers here at the end of June. Walk that way, or you can walk this way. It's not too dangerous, but be careful. Definitely watch your step here. It's a little steep, but not too much. Minus the people having carved their names in the rock. This looks really awesome. Great low light gold colors as it's getting closer to sunset. Got a few dogs around it, sounds like. At least I hope they're dogs and not wolves or lions. Well, I guess a lion wouldn't sound like that, a wolf might. They could go down there a little bit too. Let's check this out first. So you can see this part of Wind Canyon. Ooh, it's highly eroded. Look at that. A lot of loose sand around here, but it's not bad. Some really cool shapes. Could make for a nice sunset. Ooh, and the river, or the trail. Trail goes down there. Maybe it goes all the way down next to the river. Or, oh, you know what? The river's gonna be on the other side of that. So take that back. It's probably just down to the canyon of Wind Canyon down there. Looks like a steep ravine from here. Well, oh, look at this. I'm gonna take a photo of that. Look at how awesome that looks. So if you come to Wind Canyon, make sure you go to the right and loop around, go to the left and loop around, and don't get too loopy as you enjoy this really awesome part of Theodore Roosevelt National Park.
Taking the road here, this scenic loop road, you're in a section here where it's just scenic. There's no named overlooks. I found a spot just to stop here now, that little pullout area, but none of it's named. But all of this is really beautiful. Look at those hills back behind there. Such cool browns and greens, such a neat mixture there. Hills are just really cool. Where I stopped off at has this other really cool mound. I'm not sure what what makes this, but there's some cool erosion going on here. So cool, you'd think it'd have a name for this pull out, but it doesn't. How neat that looks. Incredible ripples through here. Such fantastic erosion. Look at that. This is really interesting. Just all these wrinkles. You can tell it's an old rock because it's all wrinkled. Wonder how old that joke is. Very interesting. I'm also noticing a lot of hoof prints, like horse hoof prints, on the ground here. So they must have horse rides that go back up through here. Or maybe the wild horses just come up through here. Although it looks like they got horseshoes on the horse hoofs. Maybe the wild horses here are modernized and they get their own horseshoes. How oh, neat. Well, this again is a mark. You'll have to keep your eye out as you're driving up the road. You'll be going through a section if you're going uh, clockwise where you're going through a bunch of hills that look like teepees and then you finally kind of top out and they disappear and then you'll see this on your right. The Upper Jones Creek Trailhead is an area you will not want to sleep on. As you're driving along the loop road, you'll see a turnoff for it, and you might easily just pass it by because it's just, all you see is a little, little dirt road. You don't realize that back behind here, there are some really cool structures. These rocks, a lot of cool trails in here. And for an added bonus surprise, this morning, Look at, there's a buffalo right there. Look at that. And that's why I've been staying in my car, even though I'm a pretty good distance away, but I don't think I'm quite far enough away. I don't want to turn into one of those tourists that you hear about Yellowstone all the time getting gored by a buffalo or a bison. I will keep my distance and stay inside the vehicle, at least for right now. So be sure to stop by the Upper Jones Creek Trailhead and maybe you'll get as lucky as I was and you'll get a little bison here to come pose for you. Look at that. And with a little zooming in, you can get the exact shot you want and have your, your safe distance and the bison may not even know you're there. Welcome to Boy Court Overlook. Gives you a, quite a broad ex view of the expanse here. And as a quick note, boy is spelled B-O-I, 
not B-O-Y. I'd always thought the B-O-I spelling was kind of a new modern take on the word boy. It seems like nowadays everybody wants to spell something different. But it sounds like that the B-O-I has been around for a long, 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 long time. Here's a little information. Shows you what you're going to be seeing from Boy Court Overlook. Quite a few buttes out there to look at and gaze at. There's a little trail here off to the side, and uh, we have some bison flavored aroma this morning. So it looks like the bison are around here somewhere too. They seem to be scattered all over Theodore Roosevelt National Park. As we near the top of the trail here, See, it splits off in a lot of different directions. Ooh, there's somebody down there just really enjoying the view down there. Just ran into her husband, I believe, because he was grabbing some lawn chairs. He's bringing them to set up so they can just sit here and enjoy the view. You look, there's another trail heading off that way. Not sure how many of these are official trails or bison trails, but they are trails nonetheless. This is the view on the opposite side. Opens up down into a huge valley down there. So this is the view on the other side of Boy Court Overlook. The next pullout is for the Boy Court Trail. It's a short little trail, 15 minutes, easy, gentle terrain. You can see it'll have some nice views down there, but you're gonna have to go on the hike to get to it. From here, you can see where the trail heads off down there, but I would say Boy Court Overlook is much more photogenic than the Boy Court Trail. Here we are at Buck Hill. See some people there at the very top of it. Buck Hill is a short, quick, one mile road off of the main loop road. And uh, I would seriously suggest that you come and take it because from what I've seen so far, it's definitely worth it. I haven't been up there where they're at yet. We'll explore that in a minute. But since they're over there, I saw this right here. Look at that. First off, I'm gonna take a photo but I'm gonna hike up there and it's just a short 50 feet or so. Get up there and see what kind of views are from up there. Even if there's no views, I'm gonna be really happy with this photo. I like all these multiple trails going up and the one tree up there. That looks so cool. Does this look cool or what? Love these multiple paths. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy shimoli. Look at this view. Whoa, this is not even Buck Hill, this is just you saw it, that little short hill off to the side. Whoa, I only came up here because I liked the tree at the top and all the cool multiple paths. 
This is awesome. Look at the views here. Well, it's guaranteed now. You have got to take the drive up to Buck Hill. This is just so amazing. I'm so glad I came up here. Lots of neat wildflowers along the hillside too. Look at this. And then off to the side here. Looking to the north. Meadows covered with some yellow flowers. Look at that. Oh man. This is so awesome. Well, Buck Hill is gonna have a tough task ahead of it. I don't know if it can beat out this view. I'm gonna go find out, but this may be the little secret hidden gem here. Instead of going to Buck Hill, maybe you come here. But before I make that declaration, I've gotta go hike to the top of Buck Hill. So let me head on over there. All right, Buck Hill. Looks from here like it should be a good view also. We'll see if Buck Jr. supersedes Buck Sr. here. Short little walk up. It is inclining, of course, but this is very easy. Just take your pace. If you're not used to any inclines, we'll be up here in 30 seconds. Look at this undercut rock right here. So we get to the top. That is so awesome. The rains. I guess you could duck underneath there if you didn't have a rain jacket. Ooh, lots of wildflowers here. I like the makeup of this. I thought it was just gonna kind of be just a grassy green top, but it's got a lot of cool rocks with some great shapes and designs here. Looking very photogenic. And you do get a really nice view here. Look at this. So I would say Buck Hill Jr. is a chip off the old block here. I don't think it's better than Buck Sr. But it is very nice over there. But I'm going to say I really like this. I like not only the overlook of some of the badlands, but I like that you can set up some rocks here in the foreground. That is really cool. Ooh. At the top. It's like a demolition derby of, of trails up there, looking like they're going every which way. But it looks like they all kind of lead to the same place at the very end. I'm going to walk over there and see what there is to see on that side. I'll tell you one thing right off the bat that is also really nice about this as I squeeze through this little narrow crevice between the two rocks. 
is that you have a 360 degree view up here. So if you come up here like at sunset and there's some clouds or in the sky, you pretty much can get a great sunset shot no matter what, as long as there's sunset colors that is. But we'll take that for granted that there's gonna be awesome sunset colors. But you, so you can set up here, cause they don't always go where you think they're gonna go. But if you're up here, you can shoot any angle that you want. So that is really great. And that, that's really a great help as a photographer to be, help, to be able to have that kind of flexibility is really awesome. I would say it was maybe a quarter mile to get to this part, so it's not much further than when you first get to the top of Buck Hill. And look at this. I love the lone tree. The solo tree. The tree that has endured all by itself. I love that. I'm going to take some photos of that tree. Here's the view. We got this is looking south or thereabouts. Got a long lens, that'd be perfect for right here. There's some nice views here. More scattered rocks. Right here is kind of to the north, somewhere in there. I don't have my compass with me, but approximately north there. Well, I'm going to leave you with that for here at Buck Hill. Definitely worth the stopping, the taking the one mile off the main loop. Definitely do it. Come on over here. There's not many people here. Right now, I'm the only person back here. If you want a little solitude like my friend the tree over there, come on over to Buck Hill. The Badland Spur Trail is next. And while it's more of a parking area for hiking than necessarily an overlook, you can see where we're at. And you can see some really incredible photography opportunities here. Look at how beautiful that looks. Got some water flow here. It looks maybe a little stagnant right now, but obviously there is some flow that happens there. Otherwise this undercut wouldn't have happened. Almost looks like it got dammed up, dammed down there. I don't know if there's, doesn't really necessarily look like beavers. I don't know, maybe they have beavers up here. Cause that's how that got cut out. Well, make sure you stop by this one too. Badland Spur Trail. The old east entrance is old and no longer being used. You can hike out there if you would like, but the pull off for the parking area to hike out there is right next to some really awesome rocks. Look at these cool looking rocks. A lot of great erosion here really makes for a good spot to stop even if you don't want to hike. A 
the Badlands Overlook is a really awesome spot to stop. Really gives you some great views. And before I forget, the ride, the drive between uh, the Old East Entrance and this Badlands Overlook, it's got some incredible rocks. Well, we're stopping, although there's not many places there to stop. But if you can find a place or want to stop and then walk back to it, there is just so many cool rock structures there. Isn't this awesome? So this Badlands Overlook really gives you a nice overlook of what Badlands looks like. stop at the southern unit and what a way to make it our last stop sure hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe and share comment and like and come back for more thank you so much for watching